Let's go back to Pearl Roundabout, that's in Bahrain now, and we can talk uh, about some of the developments going on there. Robert Fisk, Middle East correspondent for the UK's independent newspaper, joins us from there live. You know, it would have been unthinkable, Robert, just a few weeks ago to imagine protests against a monarch or head of state in the Arabian Gulf. How important is this, not only for Bahrain, but for the rest of the region? Well, you see, there were a few uprisings here, particularly among the Shiite community, in the past. But we reporters didn't rush out here and report it then, and then we never saw anything like this. I think this is much more important, actually, for Saudi Arabia than it is for Bahrain. You know, I think the Saudis must be very, very worried in Riyadh that up in Dahran, which is a predominantly Shiite area of Saudi Arabia, there are going to be copycat protests with good reason against the Saudi government. Here, of course, it is comparatively peaceful if you compare even the security forces to Egypt, although they turned out to be a rabble a couple of nights ago. And one of the things you have to remember is that this is not Egypt, this is not Libya, this is not Yemen. Um, this is a quite separate, almost a civil rights demand that is coming from the largely Shiite community here, this pro these protesters. But as I say, it's a very important thing, not just for the Bahrainis, and of course the Bahraini ruling family is Sunni, but it's very important for the Saudis. And you know, we are well aware that the Saudis were pushing the Al Khalifa family here to take very strict measures against the protesters. And in the end, to their great credit, um, it was indeed the Crown Prince, who's Supreme Deputy Supreme Commander, who pulled the army away and ordered the police out, which in fact ensured that the people could come back here and that this would almost turn into a jamboree, what might have been a bloodbath. So that was one good step the King made. The next question, of course, he promises all these reforms, as Egyptians have been promised. Well, we'll wait to see if they actually come about. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on right across the region. We've seen protest movements emerging all the way from Morocco to uh, Bahrain and, and uh, well, even promised protests in Tehran today, we're hearing. But what sort of new regional order might emerge once the dust settles in North Africa and the Middle East? Well, the first thing you have to notice that with a few tiny exceptions, this is a secular, classless rising of people. This is not Islamic. There isn't a single Islamist flag here. I didn't see one. I saw just one out of millions of flags in Egypt. So all this nonsense about, oh, we're worried about the Muslim Brotherhood, extremist imams and so on. I think it's a load of old nonsense. Um, this is a secular uprising. But one of the things I think that I've seen happen, I've been in this region for 36 years, far too long, you might say. And one of the things I've noticed is that when I came to this region, whether I was in Bahrain, where they had a very nasty secret police back in the 70s, run by a former special branch policeman from Britain, of course, um, there was torture, and everywhere throughout the region, Egypt, both under Sadat, Mubarak and so on, people were frightened. What's happened now is that people have lost their fear. Arabs have lost their fear. And when you lose your fear, you cannot be re-injected with it. The whole situation changes, and from then on, the people who have power have either got to give some of it away or have got to go. And that, I think, is what's happening in the region. Uh, this doesn't include the issue of Israel, which I'm happily leaving out at this point. Well, it's always good to get your thoughts. Thanks, Robert Fisk, right from the heart of one of those hotspots in Bahrain.